Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Hamad Qureshi, an integrative family physician with a practice in Cypress, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Qureshi. Um, we're very happy that you're here with us today. I'd like to start, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about your practice. Sure, so um, my practice is located in uh, Cypress, Texas, which is uh, northwest part of uh, Houston. And uh, it's actually a very, very new uh, private practice, uh, about eight months old. So um, previous to this, I was in academics as a academic hospitalist and uh, did that for about six years and uh, recently um, stopped that and uh, started my own private practice. Uh, started off as a primary care, uh, traditional primary care, mm -hmm. um, but now doing more of an integrative, uh, integrative practice which we're uh, trying to fusion both uh, the traditional side of things as well as the alternative, holistic, integrative side of things. So, And what made you decide to transition from traditional to integrated medicine? So uh, it's a great question. You know, I was uh, actually one of the uh, few lucky ones to get a little bit of taste of integrative medicine during residency training. So went to residency at the University of Texas uh, Medical Branch in Galveston, Texas, mm -hmm. and they had a um, they had a section on integrative medicine during the course of the training that was optional. It wasn't required, but that kind of sparked my interest into what integrative medicine is, what integrative cancer care is, what are different supplements that we use. So that was the initial startup of my interest in there. Um, and then working for six years as an academic hospitalist, you know, seeing a lot of chronic disease over and over, same diagnoses, same hospitalizations. And uh, that kind of sparked my interest into, you know, treating, you know, th that we have to do a better job of trying to prevent these people from ending up in these hospitals all, all the time. And I think that primary care and integrative medicine, combined tools together, are uh, the best uh, weapons that you can have to kind of uh, at your disposal to to be able to do that. So you you began uh, with integrative medicine during your residency. When did you hear about A4M? How did you get started attending our conferences? So it's it's a good question. I heard about A4M through a friend of mine who was doing concierge medicine in Dallas. I was looking for more resources to learn to better equip myself to make sure that I knew. Um, or I could be the most resourceful person for my, for my patients. So one of my friends introduced me to, to uh, the A4M and I initially first attended an A4M conference uh, in Dallas, um, which was late last year about IV uh, chelation therapy and uh, really enjoyed that conference and uh, learned a lot from it. And, uh, you know, um, started thinking that, you know, this is something that I want to learn more. Um, then uh, had an opportunity to attend a weekend uh, endocrinology symposium in Houston, uh, I think just a couple of months ago. And just my mind was blown by the information that I learned and took, took that information uh, to my patient's practice as well, mm -hmm. where, you know, started getting into uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapies and uh, different things like that and saw what an impact that was making to my patients. Um, and I just had decided at that time that, you know, I want to, I want to learn more. And uh, I think the most important thing is to uh, just step back and think out of the box. And I do believe that, you know, our patients come to us uh, for help and they, uh, they, they, that's a lot of trust that somebody places on you. So I think the thing that I've learned most is that as long as you are, your heart is in the right place uh, to eventually help patients, uh, um, you sometimes need to just think out of the box and uh, do a little bit more deeper investigation and you will 
uh, come up with answers that will really help your patients. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that means uh, finding out different avenues of stress reduction, um, you know, the proper way of doing bioidentical hormone replacement, the safe way of doing bioidentical hormone replacement, uh, checking for uh, metabolites in the urine for when you're putting patients on uh, on hormones. So things that you know I was uh, not previously aware of and uh, have just been blown away by the information that I've learned uh, so far. Uh, one thing that I've realized just, uh, you know, eight, 10 months into, into practice is that uh, people are hungry for, uh, for alternative integrative care. And I think that, I think there is not enough of it. There are not enough providers. There's not enough knowledge base um, and I've seen a positive impact in my patient population just in a few months of doing this, uh, of you know, increased energy, better coping skills, increased in the uh, better treatment of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, uh, one of the challenges that uh, us integrative or functional docs get is to, um, to work with different uh, different people um, when we're talking to our colleagues who are more uh, traditional medicine. So I think that people like me who are young, early into their practice, if I get trained properly and make a meaningful impact on my patient population, and I, I go and round on the lo in the local hospitals, I still take ER call, I go to nursing homes. So right now I still have a pretty varied presence in a lot of different healthcare settings. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I can be really at the forefront in my community, introducing just what integrative medicine does and just what, uh, what tools we have to make people better. Um, I was at the nursing home, rounding on a nursing home patient where um, a nurse was, I overheard a nurse talking about vitamin D. So it just gave me an opportunity to just go in there and hey, tell the, tell the two nurses who were communicating that what vitamin D does, how important it is, what is the right doses that we should be supplementing with, mm -hmm. what are some of the good sources of vitamin D. So just some, uh, and, and I'll give you another example, which is just came to my mind. Just last week I was on ER call, so I admitted this lady in the hospital uh, who was in her mid-30s, came in for a migraine, um, got admitted through the ER, I was on call, so I came in to see her the next day, and I, as I was taking her history, and I was like, do you take any magnesium? And she's like, oh no, I don't take magnesium. And then we started talking about magnesium and how imp impactful it is in, in a host of different things, but one of them being migraine prevention. And she was like, you know, I've never heard somebody talk to me about about this and I have been I have been looking I've been searching for somebody like yourself that believes in you know integrative medicine and integrative care and that lady uh, got discharged from the hospital switched her PCP and came to see me in the clinic four days later um, so because you know people if you if you if you talk to people about what you know and educate them the right way. Mm -hmm. I think that that can be very impactful um, across a broad uh, platform uh, where you can help people. A lot of what you are doing is not covered by insurance. Do you find that is an issue with your patients as far as educating them on what will and will not be covered? That's a great question. Um, and it is something that comes up frequently in my practice as well, as you can imagine a lot of, you know, right now, um, 95% of my patients are insurance-based patients. So a lot of these therapies, unfortunately, are not covered by insurance companies. But um, I think some of that has to do with your educating the patient as well, that when they come in and when they sit down, just have this conversation uh, with them that, you know, if you want me to just prescribe a medication that's uh, going to be covered by your uh, pharmacy. Um, you can find 10 different people across the street or down the street that are, that are going to be willing to do that. But uh, if we're going to ha sit down and have a conversation about your health and how to get you better uh, and how to get to the root cause of what's causing a lot of your symptoms, we might have to use avenues that are not covered by insurance. And I think that I am pleasantly surprised at how, at just, uh, how motivated patients are, can be when you, when you educate them the right way 
at, at, at taking on that financial responsibility that, hey, uh, this is an investment into my health and I am willing to do that because, you know, people, pe if, they, if, if, if they trust you, if they are in your office, if they're sitting across you, uh, f from you, and if you are able to make that connection that, hey, I will do everything in my power to help you get better, um, not all of it is going to be very cheap. Um, they will, they will make that, uh, they will make that investment. But a lot of it has to do with how you get that message across. Um, and if you do, uh, mm, I think I've, I've found that most patients uh, do come on board. Um, your practice also uses a lot of digital health tools. Uh, do you find that your patients find that that is very helpful? And how do you integrate those technologies into your practice? When people come to see me in the clinic for um, you know any kind of uh, wellness visit or stress and anxiety or any kind of visit, uh, the digital tools that help us into managing these patients better, we use different integrative and uh, systems like you know screening questionnaires that they would do before the patients would get roomed. So um, and they would have feedback into that information that if they scored a certain way on on a screening questionnaire and then they would have access to that information. So if they come back for a follow-up visit and have a repeat scoring performed on, on the same symptom, then just having that data in front of them to see, okay, this is where we started from and these are the, uh, these are the interventions that we put in place and that has transpired from that score being very high to very low. I think that is great feedback for the patients and it gives them positive reinforcement um, that whatever they're doing um, is working for them. Definitely improves uh, patient compliance. Absolutely. It absolutely does. I think that, uh, you know, we live in, uh, in an age where we are in instant gratification, you know, uh, just the way that, uh, you know, with social media and all of the other things. So if we can have tools available to us that we can show patients, um, I'll give you an example. So um, I saw a lady who was pre-diabetic. Uh, she was right at the cusp of you know, uh, jumping into the diagnosis of diabetes and we instituted a, a series of um, integrative, holistic uh, approaches to her where uh, I started her on a uh, diet regimen, watching her carbohydrate intake, got her started on some supplements and um, natural remedies to bring that A1C lower. And um, when we checked her A1C the next visit, um, it had dropped down uh, from 6.4 to 5.5. And she was uh, extremely ecstatic. And, uh, you know, it, and she said that, you know, that was the best news that she had heard all year. And it really made such a powerful impact in her, uh, on her health, just seeing that number mm -hmm. drop from what it was to uh, what it was uh, a few months later. Um, and that, gives, uh, that gives, them, gives the patient positive reinforcement that, hey, this is something that they should continue doing. Mm -hmm. And it gives uh, us, uh, the providers, uh, some, a pat on the back as well that, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you're on the right track in, uh, in making a difference in uh, people's lives. When I see a new patient uh, and sit down across uh, with them, I, I introduce myself as, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a family doctor, but my heart uh, is in preventative and integrative care. I want to keep you off of medication. I want to keep you out of the hospital. And I just want to make sure that I do everything I can to make to help you lead the healthiest life you can. And that that when I see that in my patient population, it really is very gratifying. Um, and and I've I've realized that people are so receptive to that. People people don't want to be on medication. I'm super excited. Um, you know, uh, our practice is growing by the month. Uh, we see more patients uh, every month than the last month. Um, and I'm really happy at what I'm doing. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you have to have uh, patient care at your core. Uh, you want to be in this business of helping people get better. And, um, you know, I, I honestly believe, uh, and I tell this to my students, I, uh, my role was in academics, so I get a lot of 
nurse practitioner, medical students, and uh, PA students in my clinic that rotate with me as well. That uh, and I keep uh, this. If one thing that I keep uh, reminding them that at the core of your being, you have to have uh, patient interest at heart. And as long as you do that, as long as you're you're uh, you are in the business of helping people get better, uh, you will be fine. You will do well. It sounds like you're off to a great start with your new practice. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. It was uh, great talking to you guys. Mm-hmm.